Do you think before Riyadh, your team was like the lowest MMR you guys have ever been? No, not even close. I think Riyadh was the highest, except really? for Celery. Dude, Anton like... is always ranked 400. The thing is, Anton is nah, that's not true. Flop. Yes, he is. No. Dude, Anton was like he ranked was like 400. Rank 50, like... Last TI. That was a really small period. For most of the time I've been on this team, Anton is ranked like 300. <laughs> and you check his page history, and it's all red. <laughs> And it's like 16 Nyx games in a row, and Nyx is the worst hero in the game, and he just loses all of them. He's like, my team! I'm like, well, look at your hero page. You know how they introduce like, innate abilities on facets? There should be like uh-huh. role innates. Uh-huh. Like, I feel like mid laner innate ability is like, after 5 minutes, you have to leave your lane. You just cannot stay there. Until you've like, gotten a kill. And then you can return to farm. Uh-huh. And then like, every 2 minutes, like, your innate ability like, ticks down. And you don't get gold from creeps until you kill a hero. And, like, carry players should be that, like, if someone ganks them, they just get, like, they don't lose gold, they get gold. Because it's kind of unfair. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And if, like, you're a carry and you don't hit a creep for, like, 30 seconds, you should, like, lose gold. So, like, all these carries are, like, Skeeter, I don't know, Duraccio, they, like, run around. Fuck that. You need to, to like, farm. Only should... farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, it should not be allowed. Okay, so what like, what, what, is is, what is your role's, uh... I mean, we talked about this in Peru. Team Liquid's innate ability is that we can never group up, ever. Okay. Like, we must always have at least two heroes, like, doing random shit. Yeah. Um, what well, would my personal innate ability be? Yeah, well, Mine is no, like, you're, I mean, you said roles. You were talking about roles, so what's the fives? I mean, I don't know. I haven't thought okay, that far. Okay, okay. But I can tell you yeah, my personal fuck. innate ability. It's like, I, I have two facets, and I can't, I don't know which one I choose before the game, but one of them is, like, zero impact. And the other one is, like, average impact. And you don't know which one you're going to get. Okay, do you start recording? I have a question for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I've, it's been recording this whole time. Okay, why oh, did yeah. you pick us? What? We didn't get to choose. We didn't choose you guys. It was just, Wait, like, actually? Yeah, no, we didn't get to choose. It was just one versus four? Uh, yeah, I mean, you guys just happened to be, like... Yeah, I see, I see. Fourth. Unluck. Unluck. Man, it's unluck. <laughs> okay, I was kind of, I was kind of, I was going off while we you were... You were going through. off. I was mauled, oh, dude. What, you I was like, were you doing I, some I, I big was, was energy? You, were you like insulted yes, that was, they chose you guys? I was you genuinely. I, okay, you can ask my teammates about this. I was genuinely annoyed that they picked us over Nouns. I was like, I get it. We're playing like absolute shit, but come on. <laughs> come this guy's on. flaming Nouns. Holy base. God, damn. No, but like, I was just like, that's crazy. I'm tired. Um, so I'm just gonna say some shit this episode. It's just how it's gonna be. Let's go. There's no filter. <laughs> nice. That's exactly what I want to hear. All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of All Chat. Our guest this time is Tomato, who I believe... Did you just get off a flight, Tomato? Is that what's going on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I holy just got crap. off a flight. All right. Well, thank you for, for joining us. And uh, Aiden is jet-lagged as hell, and he's supposed to be in bed already. So uh, we're, we're going <laughs> to have two very tired members uh, on the podcast. Uh, I guess, first thing, normally I talk to our guests first, but I feel like uh, it's been so long. Uh, Quinn, congratulations. Thank you. Aiden, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> nice, guys, what? nice. Why do, you, why do you sound so sad? <laughs> so it's the most you dejected just, thing. You want a tournament. Because... Quinn's, Quinn's like, is like, you know, full hearted, you know, he just won Riyadh. Fucking great. You know where I, where I placed in Riyadh? Fucking second again. To who? Quinn. <laughs> Motherfucker. You wanna... Dude, you know, I couldn't even kill him in Mafia after. Oof. That's I got true. Golden Gun and I shot him and I died. <laughs> got second in that interaction Dude, too. I, I was so obvious I was town. I know. I knew. I had to do it for the meme. Yeah, I respect it. Was it was it a uh, day one golden gun just right away or yeah? No, right away. Like he waited a little and then I I'm little. the golden gun. I see, I see. Like I was like, do I grief? Do I not grief? And then I was like, fuck it, send it. All right. So you want to you want to <laughs> okay. talk about Riyadh? Thank, thank, thank you, you Cap. What? Thank you, Cap. I it's nice to have finally won a tournament. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. I was very happy for you guys. You got I mean, legitimately, I uh, sorry, Quinn, but I'm actually way more interested in in Liquid finally that's winning fair. a tournament. That's, that's fair. Do you, like, legitimately, do you guys feel like the you, the monkey is off your back a little bit? Uh, 
No, not really. I mean, one wins. It's still a tough opponent, though, right? For sure, for sure. Like, the, I mean, I, I'm not trying to disrespect any any of the teams. Like, I, I don't think like. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but we like have had issues with one win for like months. We played them in scrims and stuff, and they would own us. Yeah, Blitz, so we just uh, kept calling Blitz them like on... unreal geniuses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we would uh, we would I streamed uh, the tournament. And I had Blitz on uh, the whole yeah. time and. He he told me that one win was your guys is like one of your biggest rivals in scrims. Like they just okay. destroy you guys. I mean that's not true, but uh, <laughs> no no it, it's just objectively not true. But we did scrim them, and I remember like there was like some internal you know like sometimes you play some team, and then it causes like some heated discussion to happen afterwards. Uh -huh. One win was like a team that like kind of beat us, and then we were like not agreeing on like how we should maybe draft, or some heroes should be banned, or some players should be given some degree of respect. And other people are saying, you know, maybe this guy's shit. Why do we care about some, you know, whatever, whatever. And, you know, I feel like that that's why, like, one win uh, stayed in our memory. And then let's just say some members of our team have been memed about the comments they made in regards to one win's skill level. I see. Mm. I see. That's I mean, a it's, been like a, it's been like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. So it was one of those, like, we lost to a tier two, tier three team, and then it actually turns out they're, they're actually legit, right? Let's just say half our team thought they were legit, and mm. half our team didn't. <laughs> Without getting too much into detail about who Fair said enough. what. Uh -huh. you, can, you can decide for yourselves who you think was on which yeah. side of the yeah. aisle. Aiden, where did you oh, land? Yes. on the? You, you, were, you, were you on the legit side? I mean, I'm telling you, we're not getting into it. So okay, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything here. You, you almost had it. He thought about it. He thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I was I was happy to see that for you guys. Uh, Quinn, you want to talk about uh, <laughs> uh, Riyadh at all? Um. Yeah, I don't know. It was kind of random that we won because we were like Dookie Water like the whole year, and then. Like, boot camp was okay. It wasn't, like, anything crazy. Liquid, like, turbo stomped us in scrims during boot camp. It was, like, being unreal. Like, all the scrims we played, we lost in, like, 15 minutes. Like, some 40k gold lead in 15 minutes. I don't know what's happening. Stomps. Mm -hmm. um, so then we kind of, I don't know, we that first series against Heroic, we played Omega bad. And we lost 2-0 to Heroic. Not a great start. Uh, I had, like, a sinking feeling of, like, here we go again. And then we kind of just got it together. I don't know. It's kind of random. Uh, when you say you got it together, like, was there any trigger to that? Any speech? Anything? I mean, I, I didn't you? Uh, I thought you had a speech at Riyadh, right? Uh, yeah, we talked in the car on the way back because the we that was the only like we went there and then we went back and then we went there and then back again. So mm -hmm. we we did the trip two times and on the car trip on the way back, we just I don't know. We just got real and was like, okay, we can. You know, like drag our feet through the muck and mire and be like, oh, we can fix this and it's fine, you know, and like cope it up. Or we can be like, hey, we just sucked butthole. We didn't like the way we played. Like, let's change that and let's play the way that we're good at playing. And and for whatever reason, we were able to, you know, actually put that into practice and do that. Uh, when you say you, you what you were good at playing, it did feel like you guys kind of went back to what was your mainstay last year. Was that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, I think I think those like this tournament was reminiscent of like, like I think our best play ever was at TI before the finals, um, and I think this is reminiscent of our our TI play. Uh, yeah. Hard to say if it was better or worse, but I think it was the same type of gameplay, which is I think what we're best at. Tomato, did you go? Uh, did you go uh, ex get to uh, experience uh, game of gladiators in scrims uh, leading up to that? Did, did... Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's cool to hear. I was, I was paying attention because. We, we thought you guys evolved definitely the best of all the teams we play. Like when we play Liquid and Scrims, it was like back and forth. But when we play gaming, it was like, like you guys could did not know what the patch was going to look like. But I feel like the moment that you kind of knew what it looked like, it was, I feel like Ace was like, this is my patch voice. You know, like I'm back to best of player in the world. And I feel like we gave you guys a lot of info because, I mean, there are teams that you lose and like, like in Senior Serra, sometimes you lose to a team and people are like, okay, they're just a bunch of tier two players, you know, guys, whatever, don't think about it much. You lose to this team and some dude is like, guys, I didn't sleep yesterday, you know, don't think about it too hard. But then there are teams that you lose and then you're like, okay, guys, like, 
what is going on? You know, like we actually just love to, because I remember we did something like we first picked SF, and then you guys did like this whole like something like laying together, and we might still want my lane, and I was like, these guys don't know about SF, like you guys actually don't know. And then fast forward to playoffs, I think it was. No, uh, no groups. And then you guys bust out like the brute offling, and I'm like, damn, these guys are like, they went from like zero to like hundreds. Like I don't know how this happened, but it just did in like two weeks. That was my experience with you guys. Yeah, I think like our one of our biggest strengths as a team throughout the like th throughout the year when we won everything like was we would start out a little shaky, and then we'd figure out what the heck we were doing wrong, and then we would like then we'd start winning. And this year was weird because that wasn't the case. Like, we'd have problems and we just couldn't fix the problems. And we just kept sucking and then lost. Like, that was the formula for every turn. We started out sucking, we kept sucking. It was all, all suck all the way. There was no all gas, no breaks. Um, and then, whatever reason, Riyadh, we were able to, to like, turn it around. Um, which is cool to, to you know, it'd be like, okay, we're not washed. We, we, still, we still have it. Just need to do it right. That was, that was nice. Uh, now that you're on the other side of it, I guess, like you had the success and then for some reason you couldn't replicate that success. And then now you were able to replicate that success. Have you figured out part of what the, the difference was for this last year? Um, I think so. I mean, to be honest, like there's always going to be some gameplay stuff, but I think a lot of it was after TI, we just got really lazy and mm. it like... It took a little bit, like, there was, like, the um, C tournament. Which one was it? Uh, Kuala Lumpur. Yep. Where we got second, and we maybe maybe we should have won. We choked, whatever. Um, we lose that tournament. And then you could see, like, the laziness start to, like, bite us more and more as more time, time went on. And then, like, after Birmingham, we had, like, a very serious, like, okay, this is unacceptable. This needs to change now. Uh, and then I think it took some time for us not being lazy to, like, kick in. Who uh, who kicks the most ass on your team when it comes to those conversations about fixing things and you know this shit needs to change? Um, I think probably like it depends. Like I think people like Ace and Tofu. I think get the most annoyed. Uh, but like the thing is, everybody gets like different amounts of annoyed sometimes. Like sometimes Celery is really annoyed. Or I'm really annoyed. Anton is like the most like chill goober or whatever. Um, so it's generally like us for being annoyed at like each other or him or like there's a slurry of it. And he's sort of like, you know, either agrees or disagrees or whatever, you know, it's. Mm. Um, but I think like that one, we, it was just it was just everyone towards everyone. Like, I think Anton was like just as like frustrated as everyone else. It was like, OK, this needs to change. Like everyone was unhappy with like so who was the problem. Who was the problem? Yeah. Who was the problem? Who fixed it all? Who fixed it all? I don't. I mean, like, I think who everybody. Stepped up? Who stepped it up? Like next time before I play you in the finals, who am I like taking to the bar? You know, like how do I agree? <laughs> ah, I see. <laughs> um, I think. I think. Uh, I mean, I'll give you the PC answer, which is also the true answer, even though it's not satisfying. And that I think everyone did, to be honest. Um, mm. as like Aiden. cringe as it is, I know it's cringe. He means it's Quinn. It's Quinn, Aiden. If he if he I says so? everybody stepped it up, then I think it's probably Quinn. No, I feel like he's saying he was not the problem and everybody else sucked us. Mm. <laughs> I'm definitely not saying that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just something. No, actually, I think Quinn was the one yeah. who motivated everybody. That's what I think, too, actually. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I, when you asked the question, I was thinking, like, yeah, it's probably him, but he just doesn't want to say, like... <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> doesn't want to sound too full of himself. I'm not... The thing is, I'm not sure that's the case. I think, like... Uh... Whenever you can tell Ace is like really like pissed or he like is really really wants to win, I think he's actually he has like this. I don't know. You just don't want to disappoint Ace because Ace works really hard and cares a lot. He cares even more than me somehow. I didn't know it was possible. Mm. Um. So when like Ace is like really upset and like is like lays down the law, and you can tell like he really cares about this, it's like people are like, okay, all right, that's that that's fair. Like I think there's Ace has that sort of like aura to him that whenever you can tell it like really matters it's like all right it matters like we gotta we gotta listen to the boss can you give an example of like a time where he said something or did something that really showed how much he cared um i don't think it's like he doesn't he doesn't it's not about like the stuff he says so much like ace is not a speech giver he's not like someone who like 
give some big talk, whatever. It's like, uh, it's the little things. It's like how after every game, he's like opening the replay and he's like so frustrated about some crap that happened. You know, you lose some scrim and he's like, he's so angry. He's so angry at like how this game went. And it's not like, like, you know, maybe there's some righteous indignance uh, like initially, but it turns into like, okay, how do we fix these problems? And I think like people see that and they respect that. And they're like, okay, this guy's trying to fix problems. We got to try to fix problems too. He leads by example. You know, we have this with Zai as well. Have I told you guys about this? I don't think so. Okay, so Zai did this thing where he would not say a word, but he would like do this on his mouse. Oh, the clicking, right? The hardcore clicking. Yeah, yeah. hard <laughs> I, I think I was. I I remember this from the stint playing with Zai. I think. Yeah, he would just like, and you just hear it across the room, and that's how you know you fucked up. <laughs> that's how you know it's like getting real. Shit's about to go down, and then you everybody feels bad, and they try like giga hard the next game. It doesn't it's, even have it's to say is somebody you don't want to disappoint, right? It's another like aura yeah, yeah, thing. I think it's, like, you know, the it's same just like yeah. kind of the just the personality, just the the quieter guy in the room, this more serious guy. Yeah, cares a lot. Cool. You don't want to. You don't want to disappoint him. You don't want to be in his bad books. Uh, Tomato, who who was that for uh, for OG? Was that Seb? Was that the person course, who didn't want to disappoint? Yeah. I'm I'm hearing this and I'm thinking, damn, there's always like this one guy that kind of takes that role, like no matter what, because mm -hmm. like for example, now that we play without Seb, like it just happened that people, for example, look at me more or they look at Ari more, and I'm like, I mean, I'm not that guy, guys. You know, you're looking at the wrong guy. But uh, people always want to like, there's always this figure that's like a little more like, you know what I mean? Like you respect their presence. With Seb, it was really clear. Like, uh, I guess uh, you guys mentioned Ace and Sai. Not that like talkative about it, but Seb was very vocal about it. So when Seb was happy, you get the the happy speech. When Seb is like angry, you get the angry speech. So I got all the speeches and like possible. <laughs> <laughs> all the all the different gamut of colors, you know, like all the speeches. But oh, well, did uh, you have a favorite speech on the speech rainbow? Yeah, I mean, I learned a lot of cool stuff about Seb. Like there were definitely moments where like he'd be talking. And this was especially during maybe like Birmingham and leading to Riyadh, I think those two moments where I was like, damn, this is why this guy won TI. I was like, oh, like, wow, I feel like, like, I feel like you're a troop and you rally it up by your general and you're like, where is it? Where's death? You know, I'm coming for you. That was me in that moment. But uh, yeah, he, he gave some real, like, he's really good at, uh, like, some OG philosophy, I guess, of like making people feel good about themselves. Like, I rarely got so praised for the things that i normally do like for me like if i play a game and ended up 10-0 whatever made every call hit every pressure point blah blah just another day at the office right but then this guy comes and he's like he's like he's bowing you know he's like you're a god bro and i'm like oh you know i don't i don't want to brag whatever right but so it's cool. I, I never saw that aspect of Dota before. I feel like people tend to be more like I guess I was really close to like the EG business like, like uh, the RTC Creed EG business like of like, we're the best, we're here to do a job, we win, okay, uh, business class, vacation time. And uh, so this one was different. It was felt more like people like seeing the weakness of the teammate and trying to pick it up, something like that. When it, when it comes to the, the speeches, I'm curious, do you think that like it builds the team atmosphere and I'm sure there's a lot of good things that it that it does, but like actually going into the game, do you do you think that it helped you play better? Like the the speech before the game, you were talking about, you know, where's death, you know? Like, do you think that actually helped you play better uh on stage, or do you think it just kind of like helped with some nerves initially? Um, okay, so for the Queen said about like, yeah, uh part of like what makes a team really good and makes you win the tournament is how well you like take these takeaways, right? Like you lose and then you have five, ten minutes, you talk. What do you say, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone responds differently and everyone had a different perspective on how the game played out, right? So what these speeches kinda do is in the best way possible, they kinda collect everything and it convinces the five players to see the same vision. This is what happened, guys. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wouldn't feel it. Sometimes it will be like, I can feel the fear. I think people are hesitant. They're not really the same they usually are. Get this out of your heart. I remember this one. And, and to me, it was like, what is this guy saying? You know, like, I'm, I'm good. I just lost my lane. And it was against, I remember these people gaming uh, Birmingham. We lost to Ace Axe. He went like 21 or something on Axe. 
And I was like, guys, I just, you know, we pick Maiden, the last pick axe, you know, blind pick faces. For... I'm, very, I'm very, like, rational. Some people are not like this. But I listen to him, and it kind of makes sense. And I'm like, maybe I was a bit fearful at some point when I'm, like, 0 5 faces for it. I'm like, damn, I'm poop. Um, so I just got it out of my heart, you know? In my own way, I think everyone got it out of their heart. And now we're seeing the same thing. And now we go to the next game. And I was like, let's show him, boys. Let's show him. Uh, so it's good in that way. On like, uh, you don't have the time to like really listen to people and be like, no, but your lane should have been fine. No, but don't worry about middle. We should. It's not your fault. No, but Demaro, don't change your hero pick. It's like it starts falling apart really quick if you don't like, you know, keep the admin decision. Mm. Hey, do you think that's a big reason? I I always feel like OG is one of the best um, game two teams <laughs> in the game because I feel like you guys like uh, OG would always take like an L in the first game or and then like but you guys would always bounce back really well in a game two. Do you think that like Seb's leadership was uh, a big part of that? Yeah, it was kind of our strength but our weakness because like okay, so if we lost game one, we go to like you know the backstage and then people are like. Oh, they're upset, they're mad, they're angry, you know, you, you can feel it, like, building up the anger, everyone's, like, the corner, you know, like, like this, and then Steph's like, guys, like, come on, like, what is happening, you know, or sometimes he would take me, like, my bad, guys, bad draft, unlock, go next, now, now we show him, um, but it was also, like, a weakness, because sometimes we destroy game one, and then all we're talking is, like, um, not even what we did good, but it's just, like, everyone's just really enjoying themselves, you know, it's like, wow, ah, so easy, I mean, it's happening against Aurora, where, like, we beat in game one, and, I could tell they were fearful. They didn't do like a single move in the entire game. So I'm like, okay, this guy's like super choking. And I'm sure you guys have heard, heard like the, the step things, but he's like, there's a mega choker, you know? They're, they're gonna choke and they're choking right now. And I can feel the choke, you know? So he was like this. And I was like, ah, oh, okay, so they're gonna choke again. And then I'm like, seven, no tower, zero four, you know? Now, now we are choking because they were choking, but now we are choking. So it's like even worse because they're the chokers. So it goes both ways, but yeah. yeah. I guess uh, I guess that the like the bounce back also like if you guys lose that game one and then you have like the speech going into game two well in a best of three there's still a third game so like what do you do after like you know the the, the game two situation right I felt like the I remember you guys had that uh, you guys bounce back against Falcons right at ESL one Birmingham right you you guys lost the initial game bounce back in game two but then it went to game three and Falcons I mean Falcons is just a crazy good team at that tournament so tough to tough to be able to take them on but mm -hmm. um i mean sorry go no go ahead uh, i was gonna say that like it's really important to have like these blame culture in teams where like you blame yourself like in any even if it's like silly way where like for example when you mentioned the falcons what happened is like we lost game one and i was just like guys i played really bad on monkey like i don't know why about gleibner against naga and i'm just dying on stop against akunka you know my bad like next game i show him and the team suddenly they realize, like, oh, okay, whatever happened, happened. And mm -hmm. sometimes you also need that one guy to be like Jesus and, you know, just get like a little crucified. It's okay to spread it out, in my opinion, because if he's always the, the same guy, then it's kind of like he loses his lane and then he feels like everyone's looking at him. This has happened in my teams before. Like, the same guy just every time he's getting flame and then he loses his lane and it's like you can feel the tension building up. Um, but yeah, that, that's important, I think, in my opinion. The, the ability to take blame and turn it into what are we doing forward now. Mm. So when uh, so not having Seb with you guys for uh, this ESB tournament, uh, what was that experience like? Uh -huh. uh, well, let's just say that Seb is like the embodiment of passion, okay? You're never going to meet a guy that's more passionate than this guy. Like, I mean, I've been like, People can be passionate, but he's passionate and he shows it. He loves showing passion. I think that kind of like makes it more. Okay. Um, so what happened on this team is when Seb left, there was a big hole of passion. Suddenly we're just like, they're bottom, they're top. After making the game, like super, you know, like rational, simple, mechanical. You know? Yeah. Yes. And then we get to playoffs and people are like cheering and stuff, and like, you can hear the crowd and we have really chill guys. So I kind of try to step up, but that's not really me. And in between games, I try to, like, if I talk, people will listen. With Aris, I will talk to Ari and be like, whatever, dude, you know, like, blah, blah, blah. Your draft was okay. We just play bad. Let's go next, guys. But we didn't get that, like, that's what I mean with the TI winner stuff. Because, like, um, it's just cool to see someone, like, really, like, I felt like they did that with Anna. You know, I could feel it. But, like, is this guy in another environment, maybe he wouldn't have worked. 
But because they believe in you so much and you really put trust in him, then you get to see the best of him, right? Yeah. Uh, and honestly, I don't know how you replicate it. You know, like I lived it, I saw it, but it's honestly easier to understand than to do because you have to do it all the time. Uh, in, in these like tournaments and stuff, you know, you like, I try to convince myself that I learned this concept from Moon Meander. It was like, someone's got to be the Giga Chat on the team. Someone's gonna be the guy that is like, guys, we gotta lane practice. Like, guys, we gotta like draft prep. Guys, you gotta be that. That's the Giga Chat. Like, he goes to bed early, wakes up early. You know, you know what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, I'll be the Giga Chat. I'll be the Giga Chat. And I try to be the Giga Chat, but I feel a little short. I'm not that Giga Chat yet, but mm -hmm. you know, I think <laughs> I try. You know, and learn from it, whatever. I okay. love it. I love it. I, I mean, the important the part is that you tried, right? Like you tried to step into those those shoes of leadership. And uh, <laughs> those are some big shoes that you're trying to step into. Uh, I was curious, it was there like I, there's all these great things about Seb, but Seb, Seb is like a big personality. He's a big part of the leadership, I'm sure, for OG. Was there anything that was uh, like good or nice about him being gone in the fact that like, did you feel like other people were able to have more of a voice in like strategy or leadership or anything like that? Just because now, like naturally him just being the veteran guy, right. Then everyone's going to look to him with him being gone. It meant like other people could step in. Was there, was there anything, any good part about that? Yeah, definitely. It definitely felt like the first week of groups, we were all like, Oh, you know, so much space to talk and like stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Especially like people are more quiet. Cause like, I guess like whisper in BCM, you can tell they're a bit more quiet. Um, but then it takes a process to get used to it. Uh, and we talked about it and we try to fix it, but it's not going to get fixed in one day because personalities take forever to change. And then you try to patch it up, but like it works sometimes, you know, but it's not really like they learn it, they learned it for themselves and they apply it for themselves. Uh, but for me, it was like, I used to clash the most with Seb because the, cause for my, like the last two, three years, I was, I keep getting brainwashed by when me under like you gotta talk you, like you gotta be the giga chat you know like mm -hmm. someone's gotta be someone's gotta have Vegas and have the auras and be like guys let's go high ground it's gotta be you tomorrow like he was like you don't have to play the, you just have to make this call be the giga chat and lead your team to victory and I was like yes sir yes sir so I got into this team and I was really used to being the giga chat but steps also the giga chat so there will be games where we both like race our boys and we would win that game either way. But then we wouldn't end up arguing. And the team was like, uh, guys, like, we just won a game. Like, why are you guys, like, talking like we just lost? And it was just because I'm saying, don't go rush. And he's like, don't rush. And we, and we just keep going, right? So for me, it was like definitely going back a little bit to having more leadership in the team. And getting, because like I said, I, I stopped doing this to get more just to step and contribute differently and, on, or, and other things. So like, we had a million talks, okay? And one of them was like, just to chill out. Uh, so this tournament was a good experience for me because I feel like I was getting it back slowly. Like I'm hitting high ground. I'm like, guys, Danny's going to jump me. Don't only. I've seen the, the gaming blocks, you know, I know Queen does this too. He's like, guys, they're going to jump me for a second. Don't only be conditioned if they smoke around, drop a ward, and they jump the back line. It's like, that's the Giga Chat, you know? That, yeah, that's the yeah. Giga Chat. It's like, someone's got to say it. You know what I mean? Everyone's going to be, everyone tries to be like cool and silent. And you win, you yawn, you're like, oh, but some dude's got to be sweating their ass. That's the Giga Chat. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm glad that, uh, you, you got to experience a, a, a little bit more of that. Uh, what, oh, uh, I guess the question everyone's going to be asking, everybody wants to know what's going to be happening with OG. Uh, do you guys know what's going to be happening with you guys coming up this next year? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of odd scenario because we missed TI and it's really sad, like the whole TI, how it played out because, I mean, the team also didn't know this whole thing with Seb. Like, mm -hmm. I sus we suspected something was going on throughout the year, but we didn't know until like a week maybe before qualities. And it was like, really? Maybe, yeah, it was, it was really tough. So like the team really took like an emotional hit because of it. Mm. And we try to make the most out of it. We kind of try to reset for Yad. But uh, it's just like every time you're like, dude, I run into fans in Peru, right? We lost. We lost to Execration. And I'm signing. And they're like, come on, it's okay. I'll see you in TI roll. And we're like, bro. No, no. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> no. I'm like, no, they're like, it's okay. I, mean, I don't get mad, of course. But it's like, yeah. it's, I just laugh it off, you know. But uh, it's tough. Um, 
So I'm not sure. I mean, we have this qualifier for PGL right now. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to continue with Kaori. Except it's like on family leave. Uh, with the baby and his wife. And, and nothing. Like, I'm just not sure. It's, it's pretty odd. Because, I mean, I guess I haven't missed the eye like the last four years or something. And so I'm more used to like, I got to play. And then uh, now you're having a couple of drinks. You know, these guys are like, hey, can I talk to you? But now I'm like, I'm just going to play Puffs and stream. Mm. I don't know, like, I don't know what's gonna happen, but we're gonna we're gonna try with this roster one more qualifier and go from there. Fair enough. How was uh how was it playing with uh Kiari? It seemed like you guys were clicking pretty decently. Pick 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 enough Phoenix is probably gonna go well, you know, right? <laughs> I like him. I like him. I like Kiari. I thought he fit well on the team because he's like a um I don't know how to put it. He's like really hard five. I like fives. I like fives that they die. And they're like, my bad, you know, I'm griefing. I like that. Because I'm like, no, bro, you know, like, I ask him, how could I help you? You know, like, mm -hmm. was it your bad or was it me that I'm trash and I didn't connect to you? And it's like, no, 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 me ruiner, me ruiner. And I'm like, yes. Like, I, I love <laughs> I love guys that are like this. I don't know why. I just feel so easy to work with. Like, it just mm -hmm. inspires me to be like, no, bro, you boss. I'm ruiner. And we're just like, you know, kind of like, hang up. No, you hang up. Okay, something like that. Uh... But he's he's super smart about Dota, like macro. Like I can tell that's why he's a good Phoenix because he just looks at the game and he just thinks about you know, his refresher and the double leg and where to put his egg. Uh, and I, I thought I I guess like he got kicked from Quest earlier this year, and I know from experience that when you get kicked like this, you you kind of learn a lot, and then it, it inspires you a lot to kind of you you ask yourself why did I get kicked, and then you're like okay I gotta work harder or like I gotta fix this stuff so. We kind of meet Kaori in like a different stage in his life, I think. So pretty cool so far. I think he uh, helped us a lot with like some fixing some problems in the team, and uh, his comms are like very. But again, another guy that's super chill. This guy's like no passion. To it. This guy's just gonna be like, um, guys, maybe fight under vision. And I'm like, oh, like yes. what? What am I doing? You know, like, I'm just wandering off with OG Dora, you know, like we're crazy motherfuckers. But. He's like, and I tell him, Kaori, you got to understand that as OG, we're crazy motherfuckers. Like, there might be a war here, but we are going to fight away from the war just because we see this crazy angle. And he's like, yes, yes, I understand. I'm like, but we listen to you, Kaori, because you, you're like the voice, you know, he's like the soothing voice. He's like, guys, calm down, you know. Rush is going to spawn and we have two offs. And we're like, okay, yes, Kaori, let's listen to so we all take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, listen to Kuro. I do it to him. Like, listen to Kaori. Listen to Kaori. <laughs> What what is with that, by the way? What what is with the the OG batshit insane? You guys just run it heroes nonstop. Like you guys have some of the most insane wins that I think I, I've seen in in like a while. It, like this year, you guys had some like crazy. I mean, I remember the, the it was Game of Gladiators was actually one of them. You guys like stomp the hell out of them in like twenty minutes, where you just like nonstop running at heroes. Tier one tower is still up, tier two tower is still up, and you're diving behind the tier two to like hunt down some hero. Like, what 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 has made this uh, this culture on OG? Was it uh, was it Seb or is I mean it has to be more than just him, right? Yeah, it's, it's okay. So this is the first time that I'm on a team, and like the cores are like humble, and like the supports are super high ego. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, normally it's the other way around. Normally it's like. Supports are like, no, don't hit me. I give you tango. And like, <laughs> course, like ah, pull, don't pull. Ah, die for me. You know what I mean? Uh -huh, uh -huh. But this one is actually supports are like, guys, like, if I see you hit one more neutral camp, I'm going to lose it. And they were like, no, sir. You know, like, I'm coming, you know, so I'm I'm there. And that kind of created a different place style because I feel like most teams are built around their cores. Usually one core will be the most vocal with the idea and then you build from there. And then Seb used to be like that when he played off when he played offling. But now he's playing five and he's captain in drafting. He's like pushing for his ideas. Uh, so the game looks different. I always thought that we play, like I always told my team, it's like it must be really fun to play support in our team. Because the like course are just great, my fuckers just connecting, you know, ganking on stuff. And then you see Ari TP top, push a triple wave, you know. So now he's got like a full four stuff or something. So I think it's interesting play style. I mostly came from Seb. But uh, we all learned a lot from it. And there's some strength to it. There's some weakness to it. I strongly believe that right now in Dora, like, uh, there's a lot of matchups. I seen like, we were good against some teams. And we were really bad against other teams. Uh, like, because skill level so close. The teams are able to figure out more, like, the 
you read my things, I follow Mate be really good. It's like they, they adapt real time to the team and like they have good talks and stuff. I think now we're at a point where like I don't want to give Racer uh Racer to Amar, you know. I don't want it to be a Nora patch if I'm playing against Ace. Uh so at some point some guy's gonna be like the avatar and master all the elements and then it's gonna be GG dude. These guys gonna be like fast and slow and like one plus one, you know, classic Russian Dota and he team flawless team fight and like it's gonna come, you know, it's gonna be like fourteen year old like new do you, generation. Do you think that will actually happen? Because I, I question like if that's possible or like something that someone will strive for. I feel like teams of the past used to do this. Like if you look at like I don't know, like super old teams, I feel like the back or at least I remember back in Han, you would talk about like the best of the best. They were the best of the best because they could play fast and slow. It was like such a big uh big thing to be able to like play a slow AFK game and also play like a run at you fast game. Um So I, I think it's possible. I think if if like Dota goes on for long enough, why not? Boy, I mean, the boy. thing is, is like back. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go for it. I was gonna say the thing is, like back then, I feel that makes it like a lot harder to do now than it was then. Is people were just so much worse. So like you could the like the skill drop off that you had from like playing something that was like off of your whatever main whatever right. You're the main way you like to play was not as significant because everyone else sucked. So like you could just stomp them anyway because you were just like better, right? But now, for sure, for sure. like. There's a lot of really sick players, even just in pubs and stuff. There are people who are like a hundred times better than the best player six, five years ago, right? Um, so like, I don't know. You see it like like you can like I think Spirit's a good example. Like you see Spirit sometimes whenever it's an aura patch or whatever, like collapses like trying to play Death Prophet, and it just doesn't work, and they just give up and they go back to him playing a stun because they try and they just it's like this just isn't working, and maybe it's because they're not committing to the bit and they're like not like. Or maybe they're too far along. Maybe when you have that much success, it's just, like it's impossible, and you need to like start from nothing and then like grind trying to play that way. Because I feel like when you've won or when you've already been good, like like reset, like going backwards and sucking to like try and push into this new avenue is like I don't know if many people are like capable of doing that, or if anyone. Once you found success with something, right? It's like hard to go away from what you know got you to where you're at in the first place right like i mean i, I like but, your, I taurus kind of agree. Just, your taurus just not gonna play the way duraccio plays as an example right as a carry style right uh -huh. i mean i i kind of agree but i also feel like that's like the because okay i feel like when we say like the old generations are just bad i feel like what, what's happened is like with every new like set of players that come along they just have like their default they're ground level is just so much higher yeah. like I, 10 years ago if you could get like 50 last hits in 10 minutes on an empty <laughs> lane you're like a good last hitter you know like now it's like if you can't do that why are you even playing the game and i feel like that's like what's eventually going to happen with dota where like if you can only play like nowadays i feel like teams are like very specific play styles and heroes and whatever but I feel like over the course of like the upcoming years probably what's going to end up happening is like you're just going to have to be able to play all patches because so. I was thinking about this earlier, like, when you said, like, nothing was working for you guys throughout this year, and I feel like it was kind of the same for us. And I do think, like, to me at least, part of the reason why I think you guys and we all also, like, got a lot better is because the game just got patched. And the patch kind of favors us over, like, Spirit Extreme. Um, yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not to discredit, like, you guys or my teammates or whatever, but I think, like, ultimately that's, like, impossible to deny like suddenly like the way that we played last year just became kind of good again and then the results followed um and i feel like the the next like upcoming years whatever players pop up are probably going to be you know forced to overcome this hurdle of like you know however valve decides to patch the game is whether you're going to be good or not because i feel like that's like kind of a struggle right now for like the top top teams Okay, so not not to uh, go too too much into information you may not want to talk about, but where do you think the game is going for TI since we had this patch? I honestly haven't played enough to know. Oh, okay. I don't really play in Peru. Um, I think there should be another patch, right? Like I I have this feeling that there'll be another one. That's what usually happens. I mean, if Ember is not nerfed, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs>
If I play against one more Ember Spirit, I'm gonna be in like one more Nisha Ember. I'm done. Oh is my goodness! New, is that the new Pango or what? Dude, this hero has a 57% win rate in pubs. I don't know what's happening. It's psychotic. Yo, that's pretty good. It just doesn't lose games. It's the highest win rate hero in the game. As is actually as unreal. As Ember, joke. that's that's pretty hype. Yeah, it's literally the highest win rate in the game. It's actually just a joke. You can't beat this hero. It's unreal stupid. You know what's something funny? I told the meta before we went to Riyadh, I was like, pick Razor and Ember every single game, and we will win this tournament. And by the end of Peru, that's what we were doing. Ember Razor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, if I have a thought for this, it's like, I, I think it's harder to... I mean, when you say I agree 100% completely, like, the players that come now, like, their baseline is, like, way higher than all the... Like, I had to grind a year what they just play for a couple months in all already. But that's, like, the hard part of staying at the top, right? And then you kind of have to abandon what you knew before, but it's kind of hard because, like, I think from a math point for some, like, older players, I don't mean any of you guys, you guys are all young. Um, I mean, like, you, there's a new hero that comes out, right? Like, let's put it this way. How many lone druids are out there in the world that they play this hero? No one likes to play this hero. No one will play lone druid. It's just, it's just what it is. And I think there's not enough discipline in Dora because Dora is a mix between like, I don't know, like a nerd science lab type of guy and like a guy playing his guitar, who's, you know, is like cracked up. Because it's like, what do you play? Uh, you know, I'm really a big fan of this hero and this hero. Do you play this? No, nah, I don't really buy with it, you know. But then they play 12 pop. They play like 20 hours a day. So they're a full commit, right? But what are they committed to? This is something that I've noticed like a lot lately. I seen like, yeah, I think that's part of the reason why, like for example, what made Amar such a good player now compared to before? Part of it is like his hero pool. Now he plays like something different that he didn't used to play before. Before it was Viper Razor Denver, and that's what every draft looked like, right? And you just prep something good against it, and you go from there. Now he plays ten heroes. I even think Queen, for example, there was a time where like I think you were really against cheating your way to middle now you also play cheese so it's really hard because you play against a player that plays this and plays this but to be at the high level like when described that that like the skill level so high it takes a lot of hours a lot like if i wanted to like because i asked myself like what heroes am i gonna play like do i see myself lifting like a ti with like lone druid i mean i don't know you know i'm not that cocky to be like yeah, i can win on anything but at the same time you know if it becomes a lone druid patch then who's gonna be the giga chat to just sits down and plays like 200 hours. That's something I respect about Dirac a lot, for example. I think the way he practices, compared to like other carries and stuff, it's like, I can see him where like, he's very organized, he's very structured. So it allows for him to mold himself to what's needed from him in the patch and from his team. Compared to other carries, I was like, okay, they got last pick, you know, like, I mean, I don't wanna, I don't wanna shoot at anyone here from like the pups, you know, but you know, that it's like a free last pick and he's gonna click the Naga and you're like, okay, congratulations, you got your Naga last pick, very realistic. You know what I mean? And I know this guy plays a good Naga, but when is he gonna play like a good Weaver in a good Weaver game, in a good Weaver patch? That's my point. Yeah. Anton is really boss at that. I think he is actually the only carry player that does this. Before Riyadh, my team was like, we think Brood Carry is really good. And he's like, okay. And he added a Brood Spammer and then played every single pub in his history is only Brood. He's only playing Brood Mother. And he added a Brood Spammer. He's talking to his Brood Spammer all day and like nerding with him and just plays a million Brood games. And then T.I. Ro uh, Rad rolls around and he's a freaking boss Brood player. Brood's first phase ban. It's like, all right, mission accomplished. We got the Brood first phase ban. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty valuable to be to be able to have. Uh, do you have somebody on, on that on uh, Liquid that's like that? In yeah, yeah, yeah. My players like if you tell them like this hero's in, but they're gonna sit down and play like four hundred <laughs> pubs of that hero. Pick, pick, pick anyone. Mickey, Nisha, Boxy, all like that. Me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. We love grinding, baby. We are grinders. Yes, Team Liquid very well known for the high amount of pubs that they play. For sure. Yeah. No, I think we're not really like that. I think we're more, um, more of a. We're gonna try to find how to do our stuff in every patch, and kind of just find how we can avoid playing, like pubs, to the best of our ability. <laughs> <laughs> So if you had your uh, druthers, would y'all be more? Would y'all try to branch out and play different styles, or are you okay with the we do liquid, even if it's not a liquid patch? 
Um, I feel like, okay, I don't know if this is true or not, but I feel like in the Zaire, like last year, I feel like we played like probably the most variety in our playstyle. I feel like we played like so much different stuff depending on like who we played against. Um, and I kind of like that. It was like very creative in some ways and it was very free. I feel like how many teams were like very scripted. I feel like we just had no script. And for sure, there were times where you'd be like, just look at Gladiators, it's so easy. Everyone just does the same shit every game, and it just works. And we're like, you know, 4D chessing every single game. <laughs> trying to figure out how to, like, you know, overcome, like, the most broken year of the patch, because we don't want to ban it. Um, but I think that year was very nice. It was very fun to play that way. I feel like this year we've been more scripted, I think. More, like, structured. Is that, uh, think that's a net effect? compared to yeah. It is yeah yeah. I mean for sure. It's like I feel like, cause I, you know, being the guy that like clicks the buttons for the heroes, you kind of like are gonna set your flavor on stuff. And I think he was a guy that plays a lot of different heroes, and he plays like weird heroes, and he plays like you know whatever he's vibing with. Whereas Neta is much more like Neta, I guess. Like you know, he has his stuff, and he likes to play it, and he knows how he wants to play it, and he knows what he needs for it to work. And it kind of sets like the tone of I think. As I was part of some of those old school teams that you talked about, right? That were more versatile. Yeah, and I think like, I mean, I don't know if it really links to what Tomato said, but with like, I think at least for me, when I was really new to Dota, I felt like all these old school captains they had answers to every single thing that would pop up because they'd been playing the game for so long and they'd seen yeah. like the rotation of patches forever. And I would just have no clue. I would just be like, oh, Medusa's broken. Okay, this hero just seems Zimba. It does everything. How do you beat this hero? I have no clue. Um, yeah. And I feel like when you've played for a long time, the same way like Zai has, or like, you know, even like, I guess myself now at this point, um, you kind of have a deeper understanding of the game. And I feel like it's all these players that are on our teams, at least like, I mean, like Nisha, for example, he's, he jokingly says every single hero in the game is his main hero. Because at some point through his career, he only, probably only played that hero. It was like, he's played for so long that every single hero at some point has been like, he's been so passionate about and nerded into so hard that it feels like, you know, his best hero. And I think that's like a, a big advantage these people that have had like century long careers have. That they've just been super passionate about every single hero at some point. So when the hero's good, that passion comes back and like you you can reach that, like, level again, I feel like. Yeah, as long as the hero okay. hasn't changed too much from facets and talents and all the, yeah. the various things that have been added. I was just thinking of Dusa and the fact that, you know, like, <laughs> like uh, you, you guys ran Dusa offlane, right, for, for the ESB, right? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we were all waiting. We are like, because it, it, well, it was the funniest part is that patch happened, and then uh, the draft... OG Bandit. Yeah, it's just it was like do a ban, do a ban, do a ban. We're we're talking about it. It's like, is this hero broken? Like, is this some scrim info? Because like the Snow Ruby tournament went on and like nobody would pick Dusa. Yeah. <laughs> but like there was some weird like everyone was banning Dusa there. And then finally somebody played it, and it was it was you guys, and you guys played it off lane. And <clears throat> I think you guys lost that game. Is that right? Yeah, they were up I like a bajillion not... gold. Yeah, I did, I don't know. I think I don't I don't remember, but I. Think the Dusa was not very high impact that game. No, I no, don't recall. No, I don't. I don't no, think it was. It wasn't. No. It was not. I think. I think. I think I ended up laning with Nara, and we ended up like kind of getting smashed in lane. And then yeah. I think he bought like travels, Atos, Blink, Ags, something like this. Win Atos, Ags. Like Atos, Ags. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I don't remember, but I know, okay, so I have, like, two psychopaths on my team, right? I have Neta, like, the theory crafter people already know about, mm -hmm. and then I have Boxy, which is, like, they're, like, the same... Okay, some of the funniest things that happen on my team is just sitting and listening to these two guys talk. It is, I cannot describe it, and I cannot, like, retell it, but if you guys, like, let's say you're at a Dota event, and you're just, like, happy to see the two of them together, just take a seat, like, you know fair distance away where you're not disturbing them and just listen it's 
I I imagine like that's what happens in prison cells when like you put a murderer and like a <laughs> like two psychopaths in the same room. That's that's what I think you would get. But like in, in like a very good way. In uh-huh. a very good way. Yeah. With yeah, no yeah. crimes being committed. With no crimes being committed, except like maybe Dota crimes. Only crimes of creativity. Crimes of creativity. Yeah. Can you elaborate just a little bit more? I don't know. Do you mean in the fact that they are very passionate about what they're talking about or the minutiae detail of which uh, they go into? Yeah. It's like the things they choose to focus on, the way they talk about it. Because, like, on their spectrum, for example, either you are, like, an unreal genius Uh of, like, unmatched, like, genius level. Like, Kaori Phoenix, for example, is an unreal genius. Like, mm-hmm. nothing, like, you cannot say, speak ill of it in any shape, way, or form. It is, like, the peak of Dota. Okay. And then, like, either you're that, or you're, like, the worst shit they've ever seen in their entire lives, and that's just the way it is. And they speak about heroes in the same, like, manner, you know, where it's, like, oh, Medusa is just, like, so Neto will say, like, I think Medusa's good. And then they'll sit there for, like, 20 minutes, and then by the end of this conversation... Medusa is like the perfect hero, and if you are somehow <laughs> capable of losing with this hero on your team, then your team must be like beyond awful. They have mm. to be like actively like match fixing, betting on the game, trying to ruin the game. <laughs> and they build up these narratives for each other, and it's like great. Or if they don't agree with each other, it's like unstop- unstoppable force versus like a movable object. And they will just smash their heads into each other for all of eternity, and neither of them will budge. And it's just kind of entertaining to listen to so so what happens if if boxy and and 33 agree that dusa is the perfect hero and you, it's impossible to lose with it but then you lose with That's, it like is there a hard no, crash landing like, that happens afterwards or what no then like privately when no one's listening they're like yeah aiden and mickey kind of they kind of agree the game though. <laughs> <laughs> or like i think i think nisha was tilted because he didn't get enough sleep last night that couldn't have been the dusa <laughs> I see. I see. Just no. Nah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I'm obviously overplaying this, but yeah, like, yeah. it's just the. Uh, I at least have a very fun time listening to them talk about stuff, and the way specifically, it's like the way they do it. So it's hard to describe. Um, it's just yeah. Very over the top. It's something. Yeah. It's something. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I don't know. Do you guys have uh, any other any other things you want to talk about? I mean, I know the eyes coming up, but I don't know how much you guys want to do. I mean, you guys are all starting up your scrim soon, right? Yeah, we start tomorrow. Why, why, yeah. why you do tomorrow like that, dude? Why, why you do it like that, dude? <laughs> Bro, I'm on my own adventure. I'm dude, this guy, like man. We invite, you, we invite you to our podcast and Caps is here like rubbing wow. it in. <laughs> Unreal. We had a, we had great conversation with Tomato for long periods of time. It was just you know, what, I feel like I Reddit was right about the you. TIs I, coming up. Like, what do you want me I to feel do? Like Reddit was right about you, Cap. <laughs> what? I don't know, dude. Red, Reddit was right. <laughs> right about what? Was Reddit right about Reddit me likes too? Me. Oh, they like you now. I don't know. Yeah, I do this podcast well, think, for them. I see. I see. Oh, never mind. Reddit was right like 10 years ago or whenever it was. Okay, all right. All right. Calm, <laughs> calm down there. All right. For sure. I mean, yeah. Okay, I remember this one thing. I was like super mad in the Oh, no. I was like 16 or something. And Queen just like, I was like, Queen, how do you do it? Because it was back when Queen was PMA, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sure if Cap remembers. When Queen was like, Queen was like the <laughs> embodiment of PMA. Like, <laughs> when Queen would all chat, God bless and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh, Homeschool, this. good Christian boy, Queen. Yeah. I would go to Queen for days. advice. I was like, Queen, how do you know lose it in your pops? You know, like how do you deal with frustration? And he linked me like this astronaut uh, blog or something. I can't remember, but I remember that I felt. Um, I don't know. It was cool. I don't know why I remember this, but I just remember that we go way back and I used to message Queen for help me with my mindset. So now I ask you, Gwyn, do you live alone, right? No. Uh, yeah, right now. Um, I have a roommate coming, but he's not here yet. And like, do you cook for yourself and all that? Or you just like delivery? Uh, recently I've been full DJ and disgusting delivery mode, which I'm not proud of and is abhorrent in every sense of the word, but that is what I've been doing recently. See. Okay, yeah. I mean, th- that's me, you know, you guys got screams, but now I like, I just got my fish delivered. 
and you know I'm gonna have to look for some recipes. I recently moved on my own, so I'm doing the. I think I'm move your mic closer. I'm gonna do like 24/7 stream and just like. Live 24/7. Stream. Yeah. Wait, you gonna do the shower, the, the shower stream, or what? Maybe not the show. Maybe that's where I put the boundary, you know. But uh, <laughs> I'll stream myself cooking. I'll stream myself watching a movie. I don't know. It's like I'm. St- I haven't lived alone in a while. It's like kind of boring. I guess you still go back to your family, right? Like in the US. Uh, sometimes not that often because it's just kind of far and it's not for very long. And so, like I, like I think I've been in the I've been in the states for a little bit this year, but not not very much. Um. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, the total lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're on a European team, so you're you <laughs> you're, you're getting a a taste of it. It's the classic <laughs> NASA player trying to make it in Europe and the the shenanigans that follow. Yeah, man. Well, Quinn, like... do you remember the the astronaut uh you said it was a vlog? Oh, I don't remember the you... Bro, I have no clue you what no this clue? is. Genuine, okay, okay. not even like a little bit of a clue. No one he remembers. It was just like something like something of values. You know, he linked me something of like, for example, if you look to criticize, first look at yourself. You know, it was something yeah, yeah. like this. Some motivational uh, deal. Yeah. Yeah. I remember about Alex Honnold too. I'm talking about the Queen. Alex Honnold is goaded. I still stand by that. Yeah, he is the gold. That dude's sick. Go watch uh, in free solo if you haven't. Anyone watching, it's sick. So, uh, to, Tomato, since you said this is the first time that you've lived uh, alone in a while. Uh, somebody actually asked a question. Uh, early on in your career, you had um, your your dad was a big part of, like, your, you know, career in, in, into being a, a, a pro player. Uh, has that, do you still, like, is he still a big part of, like, you know, you, you talk to him about uh, about how everything's going? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think... Uh... Nowadays, what I talk to him most about is like maybe I'll call him. I'll call mm-hmm. him like I don't know. So like I remember, it was against Tundra, and it was like the we already lost to them for Dream League. We lost to Liquid, and we lost to Tundra, and then we had the PG Wallachia qualies. And I was like, I called my dad, and like that I can't do it. <laughs> you know, I can't beat this guy. You know, Phil is just too good. And so I talked to him. I kind of he's the only person that I can really bend out about Dora, like my Dora personal Dora issues, and he's gonna understand. And once I say these things, I feel better. And then he kind of like compliments me a little bit. He's like, you got this, it's fine. And I'm like, let's go, you know, I got this. Uh, so yeah, kind of like that. I guess at the start, he used to coach me way more, but he's not that daughter in both nowadays. Mm. So your, your dad really used sweet. to be like a pro player, right? No, he, okay. Well, so. I, I don't know, he, I've, I've only heard. Yeah, of so what he did is, so basically, like, Peru's always been, like, really, like, I don't know what to put it, but, like, Peru's kind of like this. You get a good player, and then they start climbing, and then they get good, and then and then they go to some land, and people talk about them, and then suddenly the, ta- the tattoos start coming out, and the piercings start coming out, and, like, the <laughs> 10 girlfriends in, like, two months, you know what I mean? So my dad was really so against the this. The rock star but, lifestyle. Like, yeah. yeah, the rock star lifestyle, right? My dad was really against this, like, uh maybe like like seven years ago but that was because i played i was a minor so he had to like sign everything that i had to sign or whatever he was always involved in all this stuff and i played like some crazy ass thing with kinteka and stuff so the things that he knew about you know the thing that went down on those teams made him kind of like he always watched Dora as like for passion like for every team favorite players you know like play some pubs like free kmr pubs so he understood something to an extent of like if you watch a lot of Dora, you can understand a lot. So he got himself into coaching that year. Like he he became really close with like, like the next year, 2018. I'm talking. He became really close with the uh, infamous like CEO, and they were like, "I like how you think. I think you can bring like the iron hand of justice to this team." And really like, what's the thing you say? Lay down the lay down the law. law. Yeah. Lay down the law. You know, he was there to lay down the law, and everyone hated him. So after like two years of like trying it and at some point I wanted to play with him and I was like, I thought we should go separate ways too. Uh, then he just gave up. But uh, he's often quoted in Peru community because he always fought for these values that now they're like, I mean, I live by those values of like, you know, like 
I play on an EU team, so I wake up 5 a.m. every day, play my pops, you know, eat my good food, you know, I avoid deliveries, 50 because it's like super expensive in the U.S. And the other 50 because I want to have a healthy lifestyle. So it's like the moment you wake up and the moment you go to sleep, you're a Dora player. And for a lot of people, it's not like this. And I think that's okay. But uh, there's a minimum that you got to bring. Uh, that's why it was funny when, when we talk about like the whole playing 1,000 pops. I know the league is not like this. I know that, for example, if Nisha and I didn't touch Dora for a month, he would beat my ass. You know what I mean? But luckily... It's not like this. We're not forced to be like tied or, or hands tied and then you know play with the tongue or something. So, um, but yeah, like you gotta bring something to the table, and I like it. And these OG team people are like very competitive, and um, I think it's something in South America people don't understand the amount of like sacrifice and like hard work and like it doesn't end. It's not like oh you woke up at 5 a.m. and you qualify to this tournament. Wow, congrats! Like it just doesn't end. You either fully embrace, you know the. It's like I'm half human, half ghoul. Because if you if you don't have some ghoul inside of you, then just don't survive in Dota. That's my take. Mm. Too much. You guys agree with that take? Yeah. 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 Okay. It's a delicate like... balance. Too much, and and then and then it's Jover. So you need to you need to keep the demons at bay, but you have to leave the door open a crack and let like a little demon in. I think when you're coming up, though, I feel like you have to be. Omega, like full degen. You need like your girlfriend to break up with you, and for you to have like the hatred inside of you. Like something needs to go wrong in your life to become like really good. I feel it. Yeah, you need. That, that, you need that's that, why like... you see that transition, right? The pro players come in, they're young, they're full degen, and then if they manage to succeed and like stay in Dota as professional players, they slowly become more and more human. They slowly yeah. become more and more human. They they get a relationship. They start going to the gym. They start eating healthy. You know, they become like fully fledged human beings because they they can let that human side in, right? But you got to start off being a full DJ. I think so. Yeah. I think like even like you know, Tomato mentioned with like Kaori got kicked from Quest, and it's like it's the power up. You need that. It's like it needs to happen because I think it fuels like the the generosity in you. Mm. Yeah, I think. There needs to be a lot, for sure. It's a full long game. Uh, and not many people can do it. That's why I super respect Ace. Because, like, 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 not many people can avoid the natural cycle of life, you know? Like, it's like a flow. Like, you, you get good, you do well at tournament, like, you get a girlfriend, you start getting tired, your hand aches now, you know, you don't want to click as much. All thought it's kind of boring. Everyone's so bad in pops, you know what I mean? And then, then you're out. Like there's, some, there's been so many players that have already been through that. That people, like, if I name them, you would remember them. But if I didn't, then you probably don't really think about them. But to me, it's just too fun to like compete, like at the highest. Like the, it's like everything else seems kind of even chilling. Like if I couldn't relate, um, taking breaks with also helping me, like it's part of Dora. Like you gotta relax at some point. Uh, then I wouldn't really enjoy it. So. But I'm kind of crazy like that. So, but I can, I feel like guys like Ace are also crazy like this. Like when Queen says, I've never like, he's somehow more like passionate than me, you know, about like this win losing thing. I'm like, I can feel it. I can tell this guy is like some crazy as motherfucker. People are not normally like this, you know, especially yeah. the older, older generations. I think something that's usually not, not talked about quite enough when it comes to Ace is like the, his career is actually rather remarkable and that I don't think very many people are able to achieve the success that he had at a different part in Dota and then lose that and like, f you know, fall off to, to, you know, off of like the tier one status that he had. Right. And then be able to come back and actually hit it bigger. Right. I, I think that happens very few. Like Seb is obviously the biggest story in that regard. Right. But like, I, I think that it is very rare to be able to do that in dota and definitely some special people to be able to do that i mean i think people forget that like ace had his time on like cloud nine team secret right like <laughs> he goes all the way back to like 2013 you know like he was he was there very early on and he's had a lot of like ups and downs and there were some big downs where he just really wasn't like in the tier one scene at all right he was just like kind of just grinding it out on like some danish stack or something like that and you know still managed to to where do you think CY came up. from? What's that? So where do you think CY came from? He <laughs> that's came from that's all those true, that's tracks. true. <laughs> it's 
play pubs together, DJ and ours, Danish stacks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us for another episode of All Chat. I know it's been a while since uh, we recorded one of these. Thank you very much, Tomano, for uh, for joining us. Uh, I, we, we're, we've been trying to, to make this episode happen for a while. I'm glad we uh, finally did. Uh, any any shout outs or anything you want to give before we close out? Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I always watch you guys' podcast. It's really fun. So I, was, nice. I hope uh, I contributed to some views. <laughs> you did. It was great. Uh, other than that, <laughs> you know, you guys are probably going to have to wait a while if I had to guess for another podcast, because I'm sure uh, we're probably not going to be able to do anything until after TI. And then the schedule picks up really quickly after TI. There's going to be a lot of tournaments that are going to be happening right away. Right away. Uh, so there's not really that big of a break. So we'll try and record something again after TI. But uh, yeah, we'll just see what we can do when we can. Other than that, though, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Are you talking about the like the complex that you live in tomorrow? Hello? Tomorrow doesn't talk to people below 10 k like that. <laughs> Test? <laughs> he barely talks to you. No, just kidding. I, just kidding. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm 12.5, dude. Relax. Dude, you're catching up to me. I'm in like the abyss of I'm a not, bar right I'm now. Not. I'm never catching up. Don't worry, dude. I don't know about Asian, that, man. I, I cannot win games. I don't know what happened to me.